everybody, it's so great to see you. My name is Brianna and I'm so glad you're here at Fellowship Kids TV. This whole month, we're having a block party. We're having lots of fun seeing why friendship is so important. So let's check out what friendship means. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. All of us want to have good friends and all of us want to be good friends too. And I've got some great news. God can help us be the kind of friends we need to be. Speaking of friends, for today's game, I'm going to need your help. There's going to be a sequence of sound. I need you all to tell me which animal is making that sound. Are you ready? Set. Let's go. Great job. I am so glad you all were able to help me figure out which animals they were. You all really are great friends. Let's head over to our friend Haley and see what she is up to and what story we'll be learning about today. Five, five minutes on the other side. And I will have the perfect imaginary burger. Hey there, Haley here. I am practicing for a cookout I'm having next week. And I'm not actually cooking anything right now. <laughs> I'm inside. That would be a cook in. <laughs> so I've never really cooked from any of my friends before. So I just wanted to be prepared because I want them to still be my friends after the cookout's over. Just kidding, that's not how friendship works. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. I don't think friends should stop being friends for little things like food tasting bad. Mmm, yeah, it's delicious. And I think you can even stay friends with someone if they say, accidentally burn you with a hot potato. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, hot Friendship can last through most anything. Unless a friend makes fun of my hat, then it's over. Oh, time to flip an imaginary burger. Whoa. Today's story is about a time when one of Jesus' friends did something really bad. Jesus could have flipped out. <laughs> but he didn't do that. He didn't do that. I'll see you soon. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, can't turn my, turn my off with the remote still. Sorry. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Peter hauled in the knotted net yet again as the first light of dawn gleamed in the eastern sky. Empty. Not a single fish all night. Thomas shook his head. Uh, I doubt we'll catch a thing before it's time to take the boat in. John studied Peter thoughtfully. Peter, you didn't really want to catch fish anyway, did you? You just wanted to get out in the boat and do something normal. Peter shrugged, but he knew John was right. Over the past few weeks and months, everything in his life had turned upside down. First, Peter had shown the courage to speak the truth about his friend Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Many people wanted to make Jesus king, even though the religious leaders hated him. The day before Jesus was killed, Peter had promised Jesus that he would follow him anywhere and even give up his life for Jesus. But that very evening, Jesus was arrested. Peter was so scared, he told three different people he wasn't Jesus's friend. I don't know that man. Peter felt sick about what he'd done. 
especially when Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. But then he returned to life. He appeared to his friends. It was amazing, incredible. Everyone was excited beyond belief. Except Peter must have wondered. Is Jesus mad at me? Am I still his friend? Does he still love me? Now Peter found himself in the boat, trying to figure it all out. His fingers tightened on the wet rope as he prepared to cast a net one more time. As he glanced over on the shoreline, he saw a figure standing there. Friends, don't you have any fish? Nope, not one. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. The seven disciples in the boat exchanged glances as Thomas laughed. I seriously doubt it. You guys have anything better to do? Let's give it a try. Together, the men heaved the heavy wet net back into the sea on the other side. Hey, I think we've got something. Bring it on in. There's one fish. Two fish. A red fish. Ugh. A blue fish. And another one. And another uh, ten. Whoa, need some help here. The net was so full of fish, they couldn't haul it into the boat. They began towing it to shore. John gaped at the man still standing on the beach. It's the Lord. Excitement raced through Peter's veins. He was about to see Jesus again. But just as quickly, guilt gnawed at his stomach. Facing Jesus meant he had to face how he denied knowing Jesus. But it's Jesus. I've got to see him no matter what. Grabbing his coat, Peter jumped out of the boat and into the water. He half ran and half waded to the beach when he discovered that Jesus started a small bonfire. Fish and bread were already toasting over the flames. He's God's son and he's making breakfast for us. Jesus smiled at Peter. Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Uh, yes, Lord. Peter ran back to the lapping water to help his friends haul their fish to shore. 153. You counted? Don't doubt it. Jesus gestured to the disciples to join him around the fire. Come and have breakfast. As the disciples gathered, Jesus offered them bread to eat. John whispered to Peter. This is what he did when we last ate together at the Passover meal. When breakfast finished, the disciples rose to take care of their fish. But Peter found himself walking beside Jesus. There were so many things he wanted to say, but he couldn't find the words. Simon Peter, do you really love me more than these others do? Peter swallowed hard. Surely Jesus knew what he felt. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter remembered how Jesus would compare people to sheep in his stories. Peter, do you really love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. Sheep? People. Peter waited in his mind. Jesus must be telling Peter to take care of the people who had followed him. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Just as Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, he now confirmed three times that he loved Jesus. What's more, Jesus wanted Peter to go out and share that love with others. He's forgiven me, even after what I did. Peter, things are going to get even more difficult for you. You are going to be led places you do not want to go. Peter slowly nodded his head. He was willing to do anything Jesus asked of him. Follow me. Yes, Lord, I will. Because Jesus had forgiven him, Peter was now free to share the love of God with those around him without carrying around a heavy load of guilt. Okay, so picture this. You have a best friend. You do everything together. You eat together. You play games together. You tell each other everything. And then when your life gets really hard and you need your friend there the most, your friend pretends she doesn't even know you. That's not cool, friend. Wouldn't that make you so mad? It would make me want to say goodbye to that friend forever. But Jesus didn't do that when Peter pretended not to know him. Instead, even though he must have felt so hurt inside, Jesus forgave Peter. Now, I know what you may be thinking. It was pretty cool for Jesus to forgive Peter like that. But guess what? Jesus forgives you and me like that too. Anytime we mess up, we break a rule, or we do something we know is wrong, Jesus forgives us. That's because he loves us so much and because our relationship is more important to him than our mess ups. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Friends, forgive one another. Jesus forgives us, so we should forgive others. 
our friendships should be more important than our mess ups. I'm not saying it's easy to forgive. It's not. You're going to need God's help, but get this. When you choose to forgive, it can help you feel better inside. It can help your friend feel better inside, and it'll make your cookouts way more enjoyable. <gasps> Speaking of, this imaginary corn is almost done roasting. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Mm. Oh, what? Oh, this is gonna taste so good when they're real. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> oh, again with the mess. God forgives us for the things we've done wrong. He wants us to forgive others too. We need to remember this week's bottom line. Friends, forgive one another. Jesus gave us the perfect example of forgiveness when he died on the cross for our sins. He paid the price for the things we have done wrong. Because he did that for us, we can ask God to forgive our sins. We can be forgiven because of Jesus. It is important for us to follow his example as we forgive the people around us. That isn't always easy, but God can help us show his love by choosing to forgive. So if your friend doesn't invite you to her birthday party, or you're playing soccer with your neighbor and it seems like he trips you on purpose, you can forgive. You don't even have to wait for your friend to say I'm sorry. You can forgive first and decide that you don't have to let what happened get between you and your friend. Forgiveness lets your heart heal and opens the door for friendship. But it also is important to be wise. You should forgive, but sometimes you have to decide not to keep hanging out with the same person because they keep hurting you. You can always talk to your parent or your small group leader if you're not sure what to do. Forgiveness is a great way to treat others the way you want to be treated. It's a powerful gift that God has given us and we can give that same gift to others. Let's thank God for the gift of forgiveness by singing and dancing.
thank you all for joining me today. Have a great week, and I'll see you all next week. Bye.